When we left off at part two, we had the chassis stripped except for the rear end. Now we're going to get the rear end out. I made a, an A-frame out of 2x8s in my garage, and that standing up on the jack stands is pretty solid. You want to make sure it's not going to move around and that you have access to the rear end. Remove the cotter pins from the castle nuts on the ends of the axle. Then I drained the rear end fluid. Should be 90 weight gear lube in there. I just caught it with a funnel. Now there's another video that shows the sequence of taking the rear end out, but I'll uh, review it here as well. This is an axle puller, or a brake drum puller more specifically, but as you'll see in the next picture they don't work too well. This one broke. Chinese casting. So I did it the old-fashioned way. I pried very easily between the brake drum and the, and the back housing. You notice the castle nut on the end of the axle is backwards. And it's flush with the end of the axle. And I just hit it once with a uh, five-pound sledgehammer. You have to be very deliberate when you hit it. This is the pinion uh, snubber. You have to take the tension off of that, just remove the bolt. And here's what the brake drum looks like when it comes off. It's just a single pad. You can see on the front of this shoe there's uh, just one point of contact with the brake drum. Also note there's no uh, axle seal. There's a housing, a support for it, but no seal in it. Not all of them had that. And here's the left side. A little bit of grease in there. So there's five bolts on this to remove to get the brake backing plate off. It takes the whole brake shoe assembly off with it. Some tractors only have four bolts. There it is on the ground. I made up a slide hammer to get the axles out. They just pull right out. There's a nut welded to another half inch by a 13 nut with an all-thread rod that I used to pull this one out. A couple smacks will pull the bearing out with the race. The race is really all that holds it in there. And then the back plate for the brake uh, captures it. So now you should be able to get the rear end loose once you get both sides off. And here's a video showing that process. <laughs> Just be careful, that's a heavy third member. Also try to keep it clean. Now everything's arranged. I laid everything out on the 2x8 on the support structure. Closer look at that. I didn't take the axles out and put them on the floor so I didn't get them dirty. Alright, so I took the third member, put it in the parts washer and here I am measuring the uh, ratio. I have that in the other video. It's basically number of turns of the pinion on the right to, the, to one turn of the ring gear. You can see I have the ring gear marked. Alright, so here's how to make a gasket for the rear axle housing. This is a spare housing that I had. It's just regular car to gasket, gasket material. I uh, lay it out flat, cut it, lay it out flat, then use a ball peen hammer to mark a uh, one of the holes in the housing. That's what the round part of the ball peen hammer is for. Do that on both sides. Take it uh, with a uh, hole punch and mark a clean hole, and then bolt it back down to the housing so it's nice and flat and won't move around. Take the ball peen hammer, mark the other holes, and then mark the inside and the outside of the flange. Take your time on this and just put a mark on it. You don't need to cut it. 
take a pair of scissors and a razor blade and uh, cut the rest of the gasket out. Now note that hole is not in the center of the flange and that's generally why they leak. It's not round and the, uh, the oil will leak right down the threads, come right out through the gasket. So while the, the frame was up in the air, I just put the oil back in. And then you clean and put uh, number two Permatex gasket sealant on the, uh, on the axle housing and on the third member, not the gasket. It allows you to stick the gasket down into the uh, Permatex. So use a Q-tip and make sure the threads are completely coated set the third member back down in. You'll probably have to adjust it a little bit. Just take a, a drift and move it around and uh, get those holes lined up. And stick the bolts back in after you clean them with uh, mineral spirits. Let them dry. Use a lot of Permatex. You won't be sorry. It will leak unless you do this. I torqued these to 20 foot-pounds and uh, just go back and forth a little at a time just like a, a uh, wheel. Hope you enjoyed that. See you in the next part.